Chapter 3 The Scientist Begin all acts and thinking by using El Kalum the All. Tablet 4 The Disagreeable Cothites 19 times 26 equals 494. Lo, the Kuthites rejected the ambassadors Gabriel Zadok, son of Raziel and Zamiel, and Mikael Zadok, son of Enki and Damkina, who were called the El Muslimat. Yet they could not refuse Enki himself, also known as Israel Zadok, son of Anu and Id. Because the Kuthites were of a disagreeable nature, they were called El Kafarat, those who conceal what they know to be true, called Kafaran in Ashuric Saraic Arabic. Nurgle became ruler of the Kuthites, a disagreeable tribe. Ninti and Enki were on the surface of Eridu, falsely called Earth, while Arishkagel and Nurgle were in the Zuab, or Absu. All of them were the children of Anu, who were the rulers of the skies. The Enkiduites were of a barbaric nature. They stood seven feet tall, and they were covered with six of fur from head to toe. So from this, you would get the word Barber. The Enkiduites originally came to Tiamat, which is now called Earth, to hunt dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals. This is the Priyadharma story. They loved it so much that they claimed it as home. The Tarites, also known as Kishites, were on Tiamat, now called Earth, when the Enkiduites arrived. The Tarites came from the original genus Homo, a being that emerged from the waters, who stood four feet tall and were called Pygmy, yet they possessed a passive nature. The scientists bred two extreme natures, the barbaric Enkiduites, six Aether, and the passive Tarites, nine Aether, to get the Homo erectus which were the upright beings. The nature of the six Aoife Homo erectus was extremely barbaric from the original Hindus. Thus, they were called Behemoth, the beast of the field, who was also bred into what later became known as the Halab flugel rods. They were bred 2,400 years ago, before the cursed seed of Canaan, who was born an albino, but cursed a leper. Yet, the nature of the Nine for Homo erectus, also called Nubans, was extremely passive, along with all of the seeds bred by their mixing between them and the taller tribe called the Danakio. The original members of the Halab flugel rods and the Danakio never exited the caverns of the earth to become surface dwellers again. Many of the dissatisfied amongst them came to the surface. They are often called the seven men of the caves with their backs to the light, seeing only shadows of themselves. But their seeds did. These tribes of beings came, the negroid of the Danakio darker skinned woolly hair, wide nose, big lips, and the carcassu of the flugel rods, blonde haired, blue eyed and pale skin. Also, in the caverns of the earth, not as far down as Shambhala, for there are eight caverns, therein you will find the Terros, as they are called by the Almani or Germans. However, originally they are called Senenans or Senin. You will also find the Diwani, also called the Leprechauns or Bucks, and you also have the Deros, originally called the Sumanin or Sumin, and the Ganesha or Ganesh and Ganesa and Ganapti. That is the fourth favourite son of Shiva. He is also called the King of Obstacles and the leader of the impish attendants of Shiva. He was used before battles to prevent snags and hindrances. He is portrayed with an elephant's head and a pot belly and two forearms, often holding a pot of sweetmeats and a radish or holding one of his tusks in his head and prayer beads. The fact that this Hindu deity has an elephant head and trunk is no coincidence. And you also have the Shuyuk, or the Danakio, who originally left the planet Risk and took residence in Shambhala, but eventually had to set up their own cavern. The chief of the Danakio, called Raboni Fukar, the Negroid Seed or Mur, married a Tero, the Mongoloid Seed, a brown seed chieftain's daughter named Lucinus, against her will just to establish peace in the caverns. For the Danakia were being attacked by the Dero, who the Tero was supposed to keep under control, because they were violent, destructive and aggressive beings. So, to bring about a peaceful coexistence, the chief of the Terrace, who was named Lamsa, gave his daughter to Fukar, the chief of the Danakia. Fukar gave his daughter Radia to Lamsa, chief of the Teros, to marry his oldest son named Hatif. Lucinus bore Fukar no children. 
Shiba Shadowawa left the caverns and went to the surface and sought out Fukar's brother Yiskork, who lived in the best part of the planet, the enclosed garden in Saudi Arabia, Mecca. She was welcomed by Yiskork, who hated his twin brother Fukar, who took his wife Lucinus as his own. Fukar and Yiskork had five other brothers, namely Amo, Hase, Rama, Aksad and Tunde. All save the first two stayed within the caverns. Amo, who was also a runaway, lived 20 miles outside of the enclosed garden, at a site where the bodies of Cadmon and Eva are buried, called Mount Arafat. There was originally a village within which an illegitimate birth between Yixalk and his brother Fukar's wife Lucinus occurred. Lucinus was mad at her father Lamsa for giving her away, for she always longed to marry the terror such as herself. So she, out of anger, had a child by Yixalk, the disagreeable, yet reformed brother of Fukar, so her child would be of no service to her tribe. They gave birth to an unsightly being, with the head of a size of two men, by no fault of his own. As a child he was the object of much attention because he had the head the size of two men and when he grew up many referred to him as the big head scientist. Jakob as he was called wanted to get revenge on his people for their scorn and their mockery. This was an opportune time for the disagreeable Pleiadians from the Pleiades star cluster in the Taurus constellation to tap into his brain and inspire an unsightly thing. He was led to have faith that he could create a race of people that would rule over his own people and then the whole planet. The people around him that got air of his diabolical plan would ask him, will these people be wicked and warlike? He simply answered, only I know that answer and you do not. He knew that he would be their god. He got his idea 8400 years ago. The process would take 600 years, which would take him to the year 7800, yet the curse seed of Canaan would manifest 6600 years ago, according to their story or his story. This god Jacob created his own Adam in his image and after his likeness, in the image of a human being wicked and weak-minded that was overcome with jealousies and envies. He was born with an inferiority complex and to subject the whole world to their wish of superiority. A new man, a kind of man, simply mankind. Jakob owed his particular appearance to the fact that he was mixed. For the terror were hydrosylphalic and Yixork was a Danakiel who also had large craniums. But his wife named Lucinus was herself disagreeable from the tribe of the agreeable Teros who had a dome shaped skull. This combination produced the unsightly Jakob. The Teros lived in the adjacent caverns to the Danakiels. The Tero Lucinus refused to stay amongst the Danakiels, for she was always teased about her cone shaped head. Thus she came to the surface to seek out the surface Danakiel. This surface dwelling Danakiel, who was brother of her husband named Yixork, was abstract looking amongst the surface dwellers, for his cranium was extremely large. This mixture gave birth to Jakob, yet they were the wisest of the wise in the land. They were referred to simply as aliens because of their contact with the Pleiadians. Not only did her son have a head the size of two men, but two brains, both activated by the visitors from Aldebaran, a double star in the Taurus constellation, and Pleiades, a cluster of stars in the Taurus constellation. His name was called Jakob, who was also known as Jakob, son of Yixork. He is also known as Jacob, as well as Jacob Ha and Jacob El, or Bar Yixork. His mother's name was Lucinus, the Tarot of the original tribe of Lunarians who came to this planet to dwell beneath the surface. The Lunarians occupied Kingu before the Hindu or the Maldekians came there. She was not in agreement with a Tarot marrying a Danakiel for political reasons. Rebelling, being weak and wicked, her trials and tribulations led her desire to destroy men. Unknown to her that this was prophesied by the wise 24 scientist called Magus the Magi, who by the stars predicted his birth 15,000 years ago and charted his birth to be 8,400 years when he was actually born. So he was born in the house in the land of his uncle Amo, 20 miles outside of Becca, and later to return there at age 5, with a determined idea to bring about a new people and to teach them to rule for 6,000 years. This creation was not to be perfected or completed until his people reach a place called Pelion, a peak 
1,601.9 meters or 5,252 feet high of northeast Greece in the mountain region of eastern Thessaly. His beast-like people took refuge in the caves of the mountains ruled by an Enkiduai called Chiron, son of Cronos and his rifle Rhea. Chiron and Artemis were educated by Apollo himself and together they were masters of medicine. Apollo was the son of Zeus and Leto, called the deity of light, the sun, alchemy and medicine, who coined the phrase know thyself, a phrase used by his followers throughout time. This is their story as recorded by Mormon. Long ago a spirit child was born named Tagut to a well-known race of blonde-haired blue-eyed beings. His parents were Jin and Jeanette. Later he was to be reborn or reincarnated into physical parents. Through obedience, death and resurrection, the spirit child elevated to be amongst the deities. They believed this one Tagut to be their lord, a heavenly father, calling him Alahum, El Naur and Kanaz, who lived near a star called Caleb in the Pleiades constellation near to their lords and masters. Targut became prince of the cherubs and he had billions of spirit children called jinns that were born giving him the title Jan, ruler of the jinns. So Allahum as the heads of deities called the great council meeting to decide the destiny of these disagreeable spirit children. Both of the Allahum's elder sons were there, Diablus and his brother Zeusis. A plan was presented to them to go to Tiamat and rebuild there and then to send the spirit children there to live and to take on mortal bodies and learn agreeableness from disagreeableness in hopes to alter their nature for the best. Diablos stood up and put his bid in as saviour of the new world, wanting all the glory for himself, forcing all to become deities under him. Thus, he became known as Abalus. Opposing this idea, Zeusis said, why not give them freedom of choice as other beings? The vote that followed was in favour of Zeusis. This enraged Diablis, who convinced a great many of the spirits destined to go to Tiamat the Earth to revolt. Thus, Diablis became the devil and his followers became demons. Those who stayed neutral in the decision were cursed with black skin. This is your dark skin straight head Hindu, also called Dravidians. Those spirit children, destined to be banished from their own star constellation of Caleb, also Caleb, fought on behalf of them not wanting them to be exiled to the planet Earth. They would in time be grafted and would become pale skin and be born to human parents. One of the Dravidians and his wife came down to Earth as their Adam and Eve to start their new race. Then thousands of years after that, a Dravidian named Cranus came in human form to Earth from the star-based Caleb to have sex with the Virgin Rhea to provide Zeusis with a physical body. After Zeusis came to adulthood, he took three wives Maya, Metis and Nemozine the and fathered a number of children. Amongst them were Apolia, father of Hamartia, from which many pale-skinned earthlings claim to be a direct descendant before his crucifixion. Many think him to be Yeshua Dawid HaMashiach, Yeshua Eben Dawid El Masa. After Zeus is resurrected, he appeared in the land of the frogs to the Navajo, who are of the original Israeli or Yakabites. By 421 AD, the dark-skinned Navajo tribe called the Lamanites, who are of the original Hopi tribe, had come to this land 16,000 years ago. The name Hopi comes from the word Hopitu Shinimu, meaning the peaceful people. The Hopis first settled in Aribi, Arizona, America. They descended from Happy, the fourth son of Ha, high up in the mountains, the ancient name for Horus of Egypt, whose symbol was the falcon, and each of his sons symbolized a falcon as well, which resulted in the Hopi tradition of the Kachina doll, which is a symbol of the spirit embodying the power of the divine eagle spirit called Kwahu. His other sons were Imset, Quebs, and Eftuamutef, and the last was Happy. They protected the dead. Horus was the son of Osiris and Isis, not to be mistaken with another Horus, who was the brother of Set and the son of Amun-Ra, the grandfather of Osiris. They were guided to this sacred place by way of a flying craft saucer that was piloted by Kachina, the deity of the Hopi. The deity Masa placed in the hands of the Hopi a set of stone tablets called the Taponi, a symbol of power and authority. The Hopis are direct descendants of a more ancient Anasazi who claimed their origin from a star people. The word Anasazi is from the Navajo word meaning the ancient ones. The Anasazi built the numerous communal dwellings or pueblos 
remaining now in ruins on the high plateaus of the southern western United States. Hopi prophecies contain stories of the inner earth city called Palakwapi, which have secret openings or passageways leading inward and downward to the inner earth, which are located throughout the Grand Canyon area in northwest Arizona, America. They say that the beings that built the inner earth city came from Pleiades. The Hopis also claim that the inhabitants who live in the city are humanoid type beings, some seven feet tall with blonde hair and blue eyes, who have small holes in the middle of their foreheads containing the third eye and was the symbol of their telepathic power. These inhabitants that they are referring to are the Flugelrods. Palakwapi was the name of the Flugelrod's cavern, which has an entrance in the Thessaly Mountains, a region of eastern central Greece between the Pindus Mountains and the Aegean Sea as well. Their story can be traced to Pleiades, often called the Seven Sisters. The Hopi have named them the Chuhokan, meaning those that cling together. They claimed their descendancy had a direct connection with these Pleiadians. They had defeated all the spirit children, who were pale-skinned Nephilians, also called Nephites, in a great battle. The battle was recorded on gold plates in cuneiform. Joseph Smith said he had stumbled upon them in his own backyard in the New Babylon, America. Moroni, or Maruni, is the last Nephilian who buried them in the hills of Camarat 1400 years ago and the last descendant of Moroni, son of Mormon, named Joseph Smith Fielding Jr., who was known for his lies and storytelling, who tells of his ancestry, his family members and their early abodes. He tells of unusual excitement about a religion and how it was to prevail in the western world, namely New York. He determines to seek wisdom as directed by James, claiming the father and son appeared and Joseph is then called to his prophetic ministry, being born in Vermont, America. He calls himself the prophet of the Mormons, a German word meaning bugbear, a spectre, a hobgoblin, a ghoul, a gargoyle, a spirit, a spook, an ogre. Wherefore it was an abridgment of the record of the people of Nephi, and also called the Lamanites, written to the Lamanites, who are a remnant of the house of Israel, and also to Jew and Gentile, written by the way of command and also by the spirit of prophecy, and of the revelation written and sealed up, and hid up unto the Lord, that they might not be destroyed, to come forth by the gift and power of God, unto the interpretation thereof by the gift of God. He was raised to the height of prophethood because he claimed to have had visions that instructed him to organize an assembly because all the Zeusocyte creeds were an abomination and they disregard the original rules and regulations. Their original purpose which was to be a conquering and ruling over the planet and the spawning new families throughout. Greece became the home of these spirit children who had manifested in the flesh and were indeed goblins. Greece was their home base. The seed of Jacob was to seek them out for unknown reasons. The hidden meaning was in the name Patmos, the place of my own killing, that is Patmos, in the Aegean Sea, that is Greece, where this mad scientist Jacob was to create a new race to destroy his own people and himself. Yet he died at 150 and never saw the completion of his creation. They were all to be healthy, strong and good breeders. This new god Jacob made the Flugelrods by genetic splicing called grafting. Today they are called Goos or Jews. To show forth his power and his wisdom declaring himself the righteous and he made a people genetically and mentally weak to give them the power to rule. Then he intended to eliminate them and show and prove that he is God, always was and always will be. So his mother left Shambhala during the shadow hours. She surfaced and sought out the home of Fukar's brother Yixork who lived in Becca. This is where the story of Plato of the seven men in the cave comes from. These are the seven brothers, namely Fukar, Yixork, Amo, Hase, Rama, Aksad and Tunde. Let me show you in a figure how far our nature is enlightened or unenlightened. Behold human beings living in the underground cave, which has a mouth open towards the light. Here they have been from their childhood and are chained, so they can only see what is in front of them. Behind them a fire is blazing and they are not allowed to turn their heads. So, like ourselves, they see only their own shadows, the shadows of one another or of the objects they possess, which the fire throws on the opposite wall of the cave. Further, 
This prison has an echo which is heard from the people on the outside. The prisoners within have always fancied when one of the passers-by cast a shadow. To them, the truth is literally nothing but shadows. Of true images, they know nothing. Look again now. You see what will naturally follow if the prisoners are set free and come to realize their error. At first, when one of them is liberated and suddenly compelled to turn his head and look upwards towards the light, he will suffer sharp pains. The glare will distress him. He will be unable to see the realities of which is in his former state of illusion. He saw only shadows. He will at first fancy that the shadows that he formerly saw are truer than the real objects which are now revealed to him. He will be required to grow accustomed to the sight of the upper world. At first he will see the shadows best. Last of all, he will be able to see the sun in its own proper place and not merely its reflections. He will then understand that things which he and his fellows have been accustomed to behold, when he remembers his old habitation and the wisdom of the cave and of his fellow prisoners, he will pity them. And if the inhabitants of the cave have been in the habit of conferring honours amongst themselves, he will no longer care for such honours or envy the possessors of them. He will endure anything rather than think as they do and or live after their manner. And if such a one were to suddenly come back out of the sun and place himself again in his old situation, he would be certain to have his eyes full of darkness. It would be very bad for him if there were a contest and he had to compete in measuring the shadows with the prisoners who had never moved out of the cave. In such an instant, the men of the cave would say of him, he went up and down, he came back without his eyes. They will maintain that it is better not to even think of ascending. Hence, if anyone tried to loose another prisoner from the cave and lead him up to the light, let them only catch the offender and they would put him to death. And Yixorq was put to death for that very reason, for violating the sacred oath of the Danakiel by marrying Fukar, his brother's wife. This Fukar outraged the already deranged Yakub. Lucinus, mother of Yakub, was dissatisfied with the tranquility of Shambhala. Living under the Danakiel's rules and regulations, she found the home of Yixorq who took her in, and they birthed an illegitimate child. His mother Lucinus, overcome by grief at the remembrance of her home Shambhala, died an untimely death. And the following year Yixorq was killed, leaving the five-year-old Yakub parentless. Yakub started school by the age of four, but by age six Yakub was living with his uncle Ammo, the brother of his father Yixorq, who himself many years before was cast from Shambhala for disagreeable activity. Thus he also took residence on the surface of the earth. Yakub was living with Ammo in his home 20 miles outside of Becca. He was fascinated by magnetism. This further affected the mental state of this now young man. Living in the area where the original Garden of Eden was, yet 20 miles outside the original site of the enclosed Garden of Delight, in a village in a mountain region called Arafat. The foundation of the Garden of Delight was built by Arazu and Ashnan was responsible for the grain and sustenance of the garden. And this enclosed Garden of Delight was to be the best part of the earth. It was ruled by one of the 120 Akash Darvan, appointed by Kaoresh, who ruled from the seat of Medaz in Chaldea, land of the demons. At the age of 18, Yakub had already finished all of the schools of learning of his day and time. This is where Yakub was to convert the people needed for the breeding of his new race. In the task of making a disagreeable, wicked and physically weak being with the ability to rule with a special kind of reverse knowledge, Yakub had a verbal fight with the Alahum of the Holy City, who opposed him about deserting his people and going off to make a new people that would be weak and wicked, that used their evil nature to try and conquer the righteous. They would be called the devil, and their lifespan to rule would be 6,000 years, which they would have lived as a new nation. Then reverse lived, and you will get devil, and live in reverse is evil. Why reverse? Because this nation was born with dyslexia, and they wrote from left to right, as opposed to the original right to left. Long before Jacob was allowed to begin his undertaking, the word spread of his plan. 
one of the Alahum stepped forward of the righteous nation named Malak, whose job was to try and convince him not to undertake this evil act. It resulted in a physical fight against Jacob. This lasted from 6pm during the shadow hours, straight on past 12.01am the next day. Thus, it is said that they fought up until the next day. Jacob had his right leg disjointed. Jacob inquired of his Alahum, who was a mortal man in physical form at the end of the fight, what is your name, only to be told, it is not written for you to know my name. This fight took place in Pinu, located on the north bank of Jabok, close to the Jordan, for Jacob came face to face with an L. From that day on, Jacob was crippled, walking with a limp, carrying a cane. This man opposed the fact that Jacob left the camp during the shadow hours and he was trying to cross the lake of Jabok, a stream which intersects the mountain range of Gilead and falls into the Jordan of the east about midway between the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea with his assistants, doctors, nurses and cremators which by shadow hours they deserted all the rest of his family and this Malak declared that he would break both his legs before he let him pursue this undertaking in the making of this new breed of people from his own genes being an original negroid and brown mongoloid germ the negroid black germ from his blood the Danakio and the mongoloid brown germ from his blood of the Teros who had mixed with the Pleiadians long ago the conflict broke out and the fight ensued and when Jacob's leg was dislocated he held on to Malak as the wicked troops of Shakar was coming over the horizon. Malak said let me go and you will have the blessings of the god of the Babylonian Ishtar, the god of the Egyptians Ra and the god of the Sumerians El. You will have their blessings just don't pursue your undertakings. You shall be called Is Ishtar, Ra Amun Ra and El Elah that represents the three most powerful gods on the planet at the time, Isis, Ra and El. Thus, he became known as Israel, touched by the hand of an Elohim, you say Yisrael. Yakub agreed, yet deceived him, saying to all that he had got the blessings which had given him the consent to continue across the stream of Jabok and to continue in his undertaking on his journey to Pelion, a peak of northeast Greece in eastern Thessaly, in the Isles of Patmos, an island of southeast Greece, in the Dodecanese islands of the Aegean seas, where he was going to create his people and make them weak and wicked and give them the power to rule for 6,000 years. Jakub was captured. As Jakub made converts in and around the holy city of Becca, persecution set in. The authorities became afraid of such powerful teachings with promises of luxuries and making slaves of others. As they began making the arrest of those who believed in the teachings, the officers would go back and find and to their surprise others were still teaching and believing it. Finally, they arrested Jakub. However, it only increased the teachings. They kept persecuting and arresting Jakub's followers until they finally filled all the jails called a prison or a sajan beneath the desert sands. The 120 appointed Akashtafan officers finally reported to the new ruler named Korish that there was no room for the prisoners. They had no more room for Jakub's converted followers who were enraged for his abuse. They dragged Jakub from his cell to the middle of the city there they built a stone pillar in the center of the town and called it the seat of Satan, called Al-Ula. They tied Yakub and asked the people of that city, should he be worshipped, praised or stoned? They chose to stone him and called him Shaitan. Yakub's followers rioted in the prisons. All the jails were filled and they said, when we go back into the streets, we found them still teaching. This is what was reported to King Koresh. What shall we do with them? The king questioned the officers on just what his teachings were and the name of the leader. They replied Haggai. When the officers had given the king the answers to everything, the king said, this is not the name of that man. The name of the man is Jakub the Negroid scientist, an alien to our land, a mischief maker in the land. This shaitan was predicted by our Magus 15,000 years ago. On entering the prison, the king was shown to Jakub's cell. The walls were lined with sketches and plans of his future experiments. The ruler said, So you are Jakob? He said, Yes I am. The king said, Jakob, I have come to see if you could work out some agreement that would bring about an end to this trouble. What would you suggest? 
Yakub told the King Koresh, If you give me and my followers everything to start a civilization as you have, and furnish us with money and necessities of life for twenty years, I will take my followers and we will go from you. The king was pleased with the suggestion, and request made by Yakub was sent to Mithridath, the money exchanger, and it was agreed to take care of them for twenty years, until Yakub's followers were able to go for themselves. After learning who Yakub was, believing him to be Shaitan or the devil himself, they were all afraid of him, and they were glad to make almost any agreement with him and his followers. This is the history or future of Yakub and his people, the Asiatic black man and woman, black people with six ether straight hair of Hindu descent. Upon his release, Yakub was not allowed to preach, yet his head prophet called Haggai prepared his followers. But for his master plan, he needed to convert loyal followers that would obey him regardless of who or what. This was executed by the loyal ones. Before his secret project could begin, there must be a great many people converted to his beliefs. He first travelled 20 miles inland from his uncle's house to the holy site, where the tree of knowledge did sit. There he started to preach in the streets of Becca again, making such host of converts that the authorities increasingly concerned finally exiled him. He and a small band of his followers, the doctors, nurses and cremators, crossed northward up over the Jordan and over to Egypt, which was originally called Tar, meaning land, and also Tamari, meaning land of Ra, where they took the ships to the Aegean Sea to await the arrival of his guinea pigs. He died of a brain tumour at age 150 before they arrived, but his scientists were prepared. The scientist or his wise men, El Hakamat, of his day, said it couldn't be done. He departed for they planned to kill him and exile his followers. However, those who supported his undertakings prepared the greatest fleets of ships to sail. Haggai, with his 59,999 followers, sailed on a journey for a home in Ganawa, there to stay for 50,000 years or until a new cycle. This journey took him and his prophet Jacob's followers completely around the continent, but not before there was a great falling away and dissatisfaction amongst his, Yakub's followers. In fact, about nine-tenths of them were dissatisfied, for many did not want to leave their homeland. Great ships were prepared at the dock port in Sudan called Sorda, the outer field. The Asiatic black men, who were followers of Yakub and lived in the best part of the planet Earth, were banished for following this alien, in disregard of the laws of their own land. The time came for them to seek a new homeland of their own. Yakub promised them a land flowing with milk and honey, and streets paved in gold. On this journey, rumours spread from ship to ship that Yakub scientists were doing blood tests and experimenting and even throwing overboard those they couldn't use. Panic-stricken, they began to jump ship at several ports. Shez Bazaar, calling himself Haggai, jumped ship in Cape Town. Being without guidance, they wanted to go home and repent. These descendants of the dissatisfied had no remorse against their ancestors, the Chaldean Hindus. They just wanted to return to their homeland of Asia. Their leader, Zerubbabel, known also as Shezbazar, became the name of this lost tribe, and Haggai. Thus, having boarded the ships, 600 heads per ship, making 100 ships, once been known to them, it would take them around the whole continent of Genoa. Odudua, which is another name for Shezbazar, he led the tribe of Shabazz on a pathless journey. The journey was to take place called Oyo. The people there referred to his followers as Yoruba. They called him Obatala. His priesthood was called Orisha. Each was called an Oba, or a Papal. He was the first Pope. They sailed around the whole of Genoa. There were 59,999, and Shezbazar, or Odudawa, called Baba Shezbazar, made the 60th person. They had to make the 360 degree circle of Genoa, leaving off the Suez Canal. They sailed a hundred boats, with 600 people in each. Shezbazar himself was on the first ship. Shezbazar jumped ship in Cape Town, and never completed the journey. It was there that he died at 120. He is known to have wandered throughout Genoa as the wise old elder, and sat in the circle of elders in Omdawamban, where the eternal fire burns. There he was buried. Many of the ships never made it, they docked along the shores of Genoa. 
The original name of Africa was Genoa or Ganwa, and they often mixed up the name of Kuthites with the name of Kushites. These Kuthites were mixed Hindus, having straight hair, and they were the original black man, not to be mistaken with the incarnated gods who already lived in Ganoa and had woolly hair. The port of Sedan was their launching point in the Red Sea or the Reed Sea and they passed throughout Mandeb. Some jumped ship in Djibouti where you find black skin and straight hair. They were passing through the Gulf of Aden, land of the Nabataeans. Through the tip of Mandeb, passed over to Eel in Somalia where there is black skin and straight hair. You have people who jump ship in Masawa, Ethiopia where there is black skin and straight hair. They went down to Kenya where there is black skin and straight hair and on to Tanzania where there is black skin and straight hair, down to Mozambique where there is black skin and straight hair. Going from around the Indian Ocean on around to the Atlantic stopping off in Cape Town where Shez Bazaar disappeared. The ships continued on up to the Atlantic Ocean. They dropped off people in Walvis Bay, an inlet of the Atlantic Ocean, onto the western coast of Nambia, where the people have black skin and straight hair. They proceeded on up, and they stopped in Luanda and Angola. When they arrived in Angola, they had to break port because the Angolans referred to them as Negra and they attacked their ships. This term was later changed to Negra Omega or simply Negroes, those dead blacks, Negra or Morenos or Moors. They were called Mer by the French and some grafted this term Mer into their language from what they were being called in the Latin, Morenos Moor for blackness, which was a compliment to the term Negra, meaning black. The Mers were called Moors and prefixes many names today as Ma, In Martin, Morris, Morrison, Mauritania, Morgan, Moorhead, Maurice, Maureen, Morgan, Morel, Morehouse, Mary, Mayori, Murphy and many more. Even the prefix of Irish names such as MacDonald, MacDouglas, MacDougall, McVeigh, McCray, the MC was the abbreviation for the presence of Moors in Ireland. So they took residence and named the place Nigeria, home of the Yoruba tribes, but the woolly haired people of the land refused to mix with them, so they were forced to depart, only leaving their religious systems of Arishi, a system of ancestral worship which they brought from Arabia called Yoruba. The land where the teraphims have always been worshipped, such as the moon deity Allah, which in 1950 Wendell Phillips, W.F. Albright, Richard Bauer and others excavated sites at Katabi and Timur and Marib, the ancient capital of Sheba. Thousands of inscriptions from walls and rocks in northern Arabia have also been collected. A major temple to the moon god was excavated at Hazza in Palestine. Two idols of the moon god were found. Each was in stature of a man sitting upon a throne with a crescent move carved on his chest. Several smaller statues were found where they were identified by their inscriptions as the daughters of the moon god. Reliefs and votive bowls were used in worship of the daughters of Allah and they have also been discovered. These three daughters, Alat, al Uza, and Manat, are sometimes depicted together with Allah, the moon god, represented by a crescent moon above them. Their religious system was created with the ability to adapt to anybody else's culture, as in the case of Santeria or Brigeria or Voodoo, also called Juju. This was taught by their great ancestor and god Jacob. This religious system was created to be able to supplant itself over others and absorb them like a dying star consumes other stars. It vamped down on Judaism to create Islamicism and it vamped down on Christianity to create Santeria. It vamped down on Satanism to create Voodoo. Then the ships continued up the Atlantic Ocean to Sierra Leone where there is black skin and straight hair straight on up to Mauritania where there is black skin and straight hair, to Morocco where there is black skin and straight hair, pass through the port of Tangier where there is black skin and straight hair, onto the Mediterranean Sea where they stopped off in Algeria where there is black skin and straight hair and then to Tunisia where there is black skin and straight hair and stopped off in Tripoli in Libya where there is black skin and straight hair in Alexandria of Egypt where there is black skin and straight hair they supplanted themselves on the seashores of Mother Ganoa mixing in and taking control these black skin and straight hair 
tribes never ventured into the heart of Ganawa, but controlled the ports and sea coast. They fathered the slave trade of the woolly haired from Zanzibar, giving the slave the original name Zinji, from the Native American word Zinni, meaning black-skinned, before Negro, but not before Mer that became Moor. The lost tribe of Shabazz are still the majority on the sea coast around Mother Genoa. They replaced their ex with Arabic names. They called themselves by new names, Egyptians, Ethiopians, Djiboutians, on and around to Mauritanians, Moroccans, Tanzanians till this day. So then, they sailed north across the Mediterranean to Cyprus, where they were home with their original mother goddess Europa, stopping first at the Isles of Crete, where Jacob's rules and regulations and systems on graphing and making were prepared. Those that remained behind, by jumping ships at different ports in Ganawa, stayed and oppressed the original woolly-haired Nubans, introducing them to mythological religious beliefs such as New Yoruba, New Islam, Judaism, Christianity, and a host of others, which later became the enchantment or the spell. They also called the spell a hex, he-ex, like John, who's the he and the ex, also called the hexagram, he ex -agram. The hexagram is a symbol of the six-pointed star, which again is the form of a swastika, the seal of the Illuminati of light and fire, symbolizing their 6,000 years of rulership over the original Ishmaelites, Israelites and Midianites. The word gram, meaning a seed, ties in for this was the grafting of Azera, meaning an offspring or seed, symbolic of the sixth letter of the Aramic alphabet and the sixth letter in Arabic alphabet Satar, and which is the sixth letter in the Greek alphabet, which is Zeta, a symbol of a snake. The word Zeta is of Hebrew origin, meaning Zane, from the root word Zan, which is where they get Zena, which means abomination. Note the use of the letter Z repeatedly. Their symbol is hidden in zigzag zig, which is za 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 or six six six. Zigzag zig is the German word zigzag, meaning to turn in the wrong direction. The beings that inspired Jakob, as well as the Jakob of this day, Hitler, are from Zeta Reticula, also referred to as the Mizar constellation. Remember, seed is from the Middle English, from Old English said said from Latin semen, from Greek sperma meaning sperm or seed, or the number 6 in Greek which is again hex, or Z for xenon, the 54th element and its colourless, or absence of melanin from the Greek neuter of xenos for strange. Neuter means neither feminine or the original hermaphrodite, and the parents are these Hindus whose religion was called Zen, from Zeno meaning stranger and the religion of Zen Buddhism is traced back to Hindus in India. Now, the hexagon, also called a polygon with six sides, the number of the sum of these angles are 720 degrees. That would be 360 degrees of spiritual and 360 degrees of the physical. When the sides are equal on all sides, the hexagon is called regular and each interior angle has 120 degrees. The followers of Jakob were only given 120 degrees of knowledge, not 360 and not 720. They only used 6 ounces of brain and the Asiatic blacks use 7 and 1 half ounces of brain, but you have 10 billion neurons and your brain weighs 52 ounces. Their reticular formation or the inner laser beam that directs the impulses to the two halves of the brain for action and reaction is defected. Even the slaves of the slave trade are led to have faith that they are one of his lost tribe of Shabazz and don the swastika in the form of an X until they too can take on an Arabic name. From Alexandria, the journey continued on to their new home. These Asiatic black men with straight hair had a dissatisfied nature. Evil dwelt within them. So their wise scientists met with the elders of the Danakiel, and they decided to try and graft evil out of their nature. The results, the flugel rods came out of this genetic splicing, and the graftation in attempts to remove their disagreeable side, for evil lived within these Asiatic black men, original Hindus, since their evil ancestors came to visit the planet between the time periods of 76 billion years to 66 billion years ago. These Hindus are the ones who converted to Jakob's plan. While living in Arabia, they became the tribe called Shabazz, the 13th tribe, known as the Lost Tribe of Shabazz. 
Shabazz, for many of them got lost on the way. Those that survived the journey around Genoa were used in a grafted and making of this new race. For any babies born with negroid black genes, a pin was stuck into their brain. Then next was the mongoloid brown. They were spared to breed, to make the red, the yellow and then the carcassu the pale. This process took 600 years of grafting and separation. You have the negroid, mongoloid and carcassoid. All other races are just that, a mixture of the others. Thus Jacob's nation was born, a ruler was set over them and she was called Europa, the daughter of Aegina and sister of Cadmus. Europa was the empress of this land, yet without guidance they regressed and took refuge in Pelion, then on up into the mountain region of Thessaly and into the grotto meaning cave. They conquered and enslaved the original inhabitants of that land, then called Yunan, who were the descendants of Jarvan, son of Jepheth and Iphat. The Yunan were also known as Ionians. The savage beasts that were grafted from the Asiatic Hindu black man were nothing more than the original blonde-haired, blue-eyed, pale-skinned melanin lacken, grafted disagreeable, rebellious seed of Jacob, the mad scientist called Flugelrods, shameless, moralless, hair covering their body from ankle to shoulder, the beast of the field, also called Behemoth. They walked on all fours and ate raw flesh, having bestiality acts, Thus, the dog became their best friend. They allowed him to lick their leprous sores, and to this day, they will allow him to sleep in their beds, eating off their plates, and even lick them in the mouth. They moved on to Patmos in the Aegean Sea, which is 20 miles south of Samos, the site of Samuel, 24 miles west of Asia, that is the Greek Isles. The outcome of the graftation was the Flugorods, who were bred by mixing in the seed of the Pleiadians, which is blonde-haired and blue-eyed, mixing and grafting from the genes of the Asiatics, black straight-haired and black-skinned, and black-eyed Hindus, grafting from the brown germ to the red germ, to the yellow germ and on to the new earth breed, the Flugelrods, also breeding the abstract black-skinned and blue-eyed. He set up rules and regulations that they were to abide by under all circumstances. Those of his followers that did not obey him were to have their throat slip from ear to ear, and their bodies left on the seashore at high tide. They separated into two groups, the original Halabites or Halab, Flugelrods, who became known as the Neanderthals, or simply cavemen, eating raw flesh, running around on all fours, and living in a state of bestiality. They found their way into the inner caves of the planet, many of them took residence there, while others in time used the technology and terrorized other innocent tribes. Those that did not jump ship were grafted out of existence, as opposed to the flugel rods named Europeans after their female leader that rebelled, who was also named Europa, daughter of Aegina, sister of Cadmus, also known as Zeus. This Europa gave birth to Zeus, another Zed, that's the second Zig, the first being Zuen. Zeus had three sons, Minos, Rhodamethus and Sarpedon. She, Europa, eventually betrayed Zeus and remarried Asterius, ruler of Crete. At her death she was deified as a fertility deity by Zeus. With this technology, they were given the power to rule for not less than 6,000 earth years. They entered from the east side, where there are harbours called Isthmus, into the grotto or grot, which means a cavern. One of the entrances to the Flugelrod's cavern home was called Palakwapi. This is also where the scroll of revelations was revealed to Yohanna bar Zabadee, that is, John son of Zebedee the Divine, in the year 96 AD. All of these are names used today. You may find them on your maps. On the original journey, the Asiatic blacks were divided into three classes. They lost 95% of their people. 10% of that original, 95% became the betrayers, leaving 85% confused and only 5% to make it to the final destination. The journey was a 360 degree circle around the mother continent. Originally, they departed with a hundred ships, which left carrying 59,999 passengers, and Chespazar himself making a total of 60,000 passengers. Yet, only three ships arrived at the final destination, carrying 600 people on each. A total of 1,800 people arrived in Patmos, where the great scientists were going to spend 600 years trying to reform these disagreeable people by grafting the evil out of their genes. After futile attempts, they all agreed that it could not be done. 
For the making of this original seed, Yakub El, also called Elo, as it says, came from Tem in the south, and the Holy One Yixok, his father, was from Mount Perrin, meaning place of caverns, that led to Shambhala. Yakub went to the worst part of the planet Earth, where his creation would live amongst the Nakashites, where the original Samael the Luciferian, the evil reptilian did dwell, in the abandoned place of Nod. All of them were dissatisfied, there was no one tribe of people ruling the planet Earth in Yakub's time, so it made this convenient. So Yakub Ha vowed to be their ruler, and that he would create a people that would rule for 6,000 years, until a saviour was born. The Greeks and Roman Christians call him Messiah, Messias. The Khazar Jews call this saviour Mashiach, and the Muslims call him Masi. In the war pickets Massa, Yakub was helped by a group of humanoids from Lahamu Venus. Their description is average height between 5'7 and 6'3, with a tan complexion with black to dark brown 6'y fair hair. They could pass for any Euro Arabs on Earth who had Maccabian features, who are humanoid Maccabians from Zeta Reticuli. They have mixed in with humans and have been here for many thousands of years, producing what is commonly known as little people, extremely short human beings who are neither pygmies nor midgets. The Lahamuarians would use the Maccabians as their servants. They have been visiting this planet for thousands of years. They refer to their planet as the early morning star. They vowed to send a Venerian as a saviour to the new Asiatic black man. To him, he would appear in the person coming from Arabia. His mother will be called Mami, who is of the Chaldean gods, the Kuthite, and his father will be Elphans, from the Greek Alepho, meaning anointed, or Alphus, or Alfonso, old Greek for leprosy, from Alphos meaning white, absence of pigment albinism, a form of psoriasis. They'll spell his name Alfonso and declare he is a Kushite. He was one of the original incarnated deities, not man. This Venerian they will call their god incarnate. He will leave them an agreeable humanoid Ramadian as a teacher named Kril. They were talking about the making of the Jew, the original ones. Shezbazar means worshipper of fire. The color of their flag is the sun with the moon and the star which is a representation of the whole universe. This seed moved behind the Caucasus Mountains on up into Russia and became known as the Khazars, the woolly-haired seven ether orientalists of the sea called Asiatics, were known as the Ashkenazims. These are your original grafted devils that Yakub created. They are your flugel rods, original Khazars, and your Asiatics, Ashkenazims. Their symbol being the universe, the moon, called Kamar or Kamar the sun and the bright morning star. They used the crescent moon and the pentagram, that is the five-pointed star. The original Jacobites used the hexagram, they called it Mogan David, the star of David, or the star of Bethlehem. They endowed their creation with 120 years of life. It took 120 degrees of knowledge to accomplish this over a period of 600 years of those who were under Yakub's rules and regulations. There are those that use the pentagram, a five-pointed star formed by five straight lines connecting the vertices of a pentagon and enclosing another pentagon in the completed figure. Or those that use the hexagram, a six-pointed star formed by extending each of the sides of a regular hexagon into equilateral triangles. And those that use the heptagon, a polygon having seven sides each believing that their star represents the supreme power of force that controls all aspects of existence. However, stars are born and die. Stars have limited brightness, thus as a symbol they would indicate a limited amount of intellect. Crescents are merely one stage of four stages of a moon, thus a star in a crescent is a symbol of limited information and time and deception because a star can never sit in the crescent moon, for stars are millions of times larger than the moon. Even the octagon, with each of the eight points of the symbol represents the sun, and is on a 15 degree angle, and 8 times 15 equals 120, one third of the whole, which is 360 degrees of information. This being 120 degrees, representing the awakening and the civilizing between each of the eight points, and is a 45 degree angle that represents 360 degrees of knowledge of the physical. 
then there is 360 degrees which is knowledge of the spiritual which they do not have. This symbol was worn on the chest by the great scientist Yakub who was born hydrosilphalic which is having the head the size of two of his tribe members the Danakio and the Teros. Yakub scientists would brand each of his followers with a symbol called in the war pick Awath, the original symbol X of which you already have a great understanding of and is your modern day cross. It became the swastika, a symbol that can be found all over the world, having four outer 90 degree angles and four inner 90 degree angles, equaling 720 degrees. Their religion was based on phallic worship, symbols representing reproduction. They prostrated themselves on all fours in remembrance of their lowly state when they were walking on all fours, living in caves and worshipping their earthly fires. Thus we have sun worship. They prostrate beneath the mammary glands of females and call it a dome, and beneath the phallic of a male and call it a minaret, giving birth to your domes and minarets of their mosques and synagogues. The X numerical value is 10, and it is a symbol of the 10th letter of the Aramic alphabet, which is the Yod, symbolizing that they were originally under the agreeable Yahwehans, or the 10th letter of the Asuric Saraic alphabet, which was Ra, and symbolized Ruach, the soul of creation. They were the first Negroids born with beards, and he made them clean shaven, so that they would look like the original Tarites. They were to mix in with the original Kushite, and await their saviour, who would come to them from Venus Lahamu. There would be carefully planned breeding amongst the descendants of the Nubans, under the Amorites, and one of them would be part Nuban and part Ramadian, in the far west away from the east. They would be kidnapped and taken into bondage for 400 years. You find the symbolism in the book of Exodus of the Torah, which was plagiarized by Tammuz called Yahweh. It became the law and enforcer of the spell of ignorance, called the spell of sleep. Therein you will find the story of Jacob, cloaked in the Jacob and Esau story. This Jacob was born in the year 1918 BCE and died in the year 1771 BCE. One of Isaac and Rebekah's twin sons and the biblical story of Jacob is a symbolic story. He is the son of Abraham and his first wife Sarah. His name is Isaac. He fathered the biblical Jacob. He is also the progenitor of the 12 tribes of Israel. It was this mentality that fathered the so-called Jew, the father of technology, from the original Jacob story, which they read and have faith and incorporate into the new law, which they call the protocol of the learned elders of Zion. Jacob's mischief makers in the land now rule the surface of the planet, an evil and diabolical plan to control everyone. And like any other magnetic force, you will find that unalikes attract and likes repel. This is also true in regard to the people. Nagaru and Karkasu are unalike, so they will attract. This is done through integration in order to destroy the Nuban. For Nubans dealing with Nubans repel. Why? Because likes repel, and this causes fighting and separation. This is one of the reasons why Nubian people, the descendants of the Nubans, can never come together to unite and overthrow the devil. The Jew, who is not a true Israelite, is the remainder of those released out of captivity. Surely I know about your tribulation and your poverty, always begging for money. Nevertheless you are rich in blessings and resources, and there is great blasphemy against you by those who say, Surely they say they are of Judah, and they are not of Judah. They are the community of the physical evil one, reptilian, the dragon Nakash, or Satan, Shaitan, son of Zuen. From there they went back to Jerusalem and rebuilt Solomon's temple, which was done by a mixed people, part original Israelite and part Babylonian. This mixing occurred during the 136 years of captivity and was the start of the Jews' devilish teachings. It was predicted of him by the Magus 15,000 years ago that he would make a devil. He is also named the first male of his creation Adam and his wife Lilith, so he was born with a determined idea to make people to rule for 6,000 years. Originally there was no tribe called Shabazz. This was the name of a man whose name was also called Zerubbabel, leader of a mixed tribe of Judah. Shabazz's name was taken by men in respect and they called themselves Shabazz, and him they called Daddy Shabazz who went back to Genoa. 
The name Shabazz is thought to be an Arabic word, however it is actually made up of two words, Shah which is Persian word for king or ruler, and Baz which is the Arabic word meaning falcon, or in the Warpic Ba'uz, which is the head of the Horus, the symbol of the son of Osiris and Isis, who in Sumerian was Ishtar and Damuzi. This Horus was Tammuz, or Yahweh, later to be known as Christ, from the Hindu Krishna, the Messiah or Massa. However, the name Shabazz comes from the words Shezbazar, which literally means sun worshippers or fire worshippers. Shezbazar was a Hebrew form of his name. In the Babylonian language, it was Shamash ben Siri Bablisa, meaning O Shamash, protect the father and builder of the seed of Babylon. Shamash was the Sumerian Babylonian sun god. Even though he was called by the name Shabazz, he was in no way affiliated with sun or fire worship. Yet, fire worship became the religion of the flugel rods, who depended on it for heat and light while in the caverns, but not Shambhala, for there are eight caverns. Therein you will find the Teros, the Dewani, the Diros, and the Shuyuk, the Elders. The Making of a New Race in order to breed a being with a balanced nature, the scientists saw that the Homo erectus needed intelligence and sense. By using the blood of the six e for Homo erectus, along with the blood of the nine e for Anunnaki, it was Enki's idea to make these new beings to work in the mines. It was suggested that his wife, the scientist Ninki, use her body as a part of the experiment to create what is called Homo sapien. After Homo erectus was bred, the next step was to breed him into a Homo sapien or human being. The Anunnaki, who came from the skies, were able to produce the Homo sapien, which made these Homo sapiens one half human and one half Anunnaki. These Anunnaki were agreeable and disagreeable, and the Homo sapien was created after the likeness of these Anunnaki, called Yahwehans, Yah agreeable and Way disagreeable. The scientists saw that they had to give the Homo erectus intelligence and common sense in order for them to survive in their absence. So the seed was planted inside of Ninki, who was the wife of Enki. She gave birth to the Lulu Amalu, called the primitive worker, and her child was the first hybrid able to procreate. This experiment took place in the laboratory called Shimti, which is located in the mothership called Nibiru that which crosses the skies. This lab was placed on the planet Lathmu Mars. The Kishites and the Hevilovites complied to the request of the scientists. They were called El Amun Mul Wahadat, the faithful ones. The Kishites and the Hevilovites were a mixture of the supernatural beings that existed in the Nile River, of the barren and rocky land of Nubia, a desert region, an ancient kingdom in the Nile River Valley, southern Egypt and northern Sudan. They were associated with goodness and benevolence only. These beings were known amongst the Nubian tribes as El Baher Malakat, the river angels. They are known today as the little beings or the Ramadians. They stand four foot tall and weigh about 40 pounds, having five fingers and originally bred by the Anunnaki to scout worlds for them. They are benevolent. They are not to be mistaken with the Maccabian greys, who are malevolent. The Maccabians are a biogeneric breed from the cow and other species here on earth, as well as mechanical and computerized technologies. Their skin color is a grayish blue and the texture is smooth. They have no hair on their body and they have big heads. They are hydrocephalic. Because of their eyes, which have no pupils making them nocturnal, they look like the human insect and are sensitive to ultraviolet light. Their large black eyes are cow's eyes. They have two slits for nostrils and their mouth is a small slit. They appear to have no ears and their hands are web-like with only four fingers. Their arms are long and muscular, reaching just above the knees. Their hands consist of four web fingers. Their torso is human in appearance. Their legs are short and muscular. They have no reproductive organs or reproductive capabilities. They are bred by the cloning process and oftentimes they abduct human women only to remove the fetus to breed their own species. They are called Ramadians or Malakat al -Bah. Thousands of years ago when the Malakat al -Bah, also known as Ramadians, the little beings, were released to the work of the Anunnaki, the reptilian captured them and ruled them. This is how the Maccabians were bred.
They used the cow's nervous system to breed them. They messed up their reproductive system by mixing them with cows. This is why the Hindus of today worship the cow. And in the Muslim world, the largest surah in the holy book, the Quran, is entitled the degree of the cow, or heifer, and the snake. Their feet are like that of a dinosaur or frog. The Ramadians lived in the underwater castles in the river. They were both males and females. The females were the Banat al-Salahin, daughters of the virtuous or pious, and the males were the Walad al-Salahin, sons of the virtuous or pious. They were associated with the four categories of human preoccupation, fertility, cultivation, marriage and health. These beings mixed in with the original Kishites and Havilavites, along with the Ramadians were the Dogri, who were the ugly water beings. They are known today as the Reptilians. They came from one of the stars in the constellation of Orion. They stood six to seven foot tall. They are greenish and their skin is scaly, waterproof, and there are no sweat glands. They have no hair on their body, the back of their head is flat, and they have an exaggerated forehead. Their faces look like a lizard, but somewhat human. Their eyes are cat-like and large, jaundice yellow. They have gills like the rest of the reptilians. Their mouth is wide, having no teeth. Their jaw is wide, in relation to human proportions. Their arms are long and thin, just reaching above their knees. Their hands are webbed to the tips, consisting of only three fingers, with an opposing thumb. Their chest slightly protrudes. Their legs are long, but bent backwards, as if they also run on all fours. They have no external sex organs, and their feet are webbed. They procreate by laying eggs. They are neutral in gender. With thousands of years of contact and abductions, these entities have succeeded in creating synthetic DNAs and RNAs. They have become masters of cloning and genetic splicing. Yet all this is done out of the governing hands of reptilians, who have ruled these beings for many thousands of years, and have made themselves the dependent upon which these beings depend. There are over 70 species of what is called greys, and 16 species of reptilians, who have either visited or have made permanent residence on this planet Earth. The takeover is inevitable, unless you unite. Once the delegation had convinced the two great rulers of the Tarites and the Automites to procreate, speaking to them on behalf of the Anunnaki, they moved them to the holy place Nippur in Gadash. The genetic breeding took place in Gadash. Once the male child was born to Autumn and Lilith, the rulers of the Automite tribe, they named him Cadman, meaning up front, and Zakar, rememberer, also called Adam, the father of the Adamites, the earthling of the reddish-brown ground. Three years after that, the female child was born to Tar and Anif, the rulers of the Tarite tribe. She was named Nakeba, meaning tribal leader, and she was to be called Hawa, mother of all these new living beings, who would now be able to have children. The Adamites were created to be the successors over the others that were cloned over the 600 year period. It took 400 years for breeding, four generations in all, for the cloning and genetic splicing. That's 10 people per 100 years, which comes out to 40 people over a period of 400 years. 100 years before the 400 years for the preparation, that is, the collecting of the choice species for the breeding and the building of the earth-based laboratories, it took another 100 years for civilizing and education after they had bred them. The Kuthites were sent out of the land of Gadesh to return to their own part of the planet Earth, Sorda, the outer field, to the east, the wicked town of Nod, which was now ruled by Enlil, after the dethroning of his brother Enki, who set up the wicked city of Nod. Yet he, Enlil, never sat on his brother's evil throne, and Otum became the Khalifa of Enki, and Dina, known as Ishtar, was the female deity, with the son Tammuz in her arms, and Ishgur, which means mountainous, far mountain land, whose title was Baal, master or lord. He was also called Adad, beloved, and he was called Tesha by the Greeks, meaning storm deity. Yet all of them feared Anu Elian Elian El. This Anu Elian Elian El created Shakar, and the symbolic meaning of his name is Dawn, and Shalem, the symbolic meaning of his name is the dusk, or evening and morning, or the son of justice, who controls what is called time on this planet Earth. This Shakar gave birth to Halal, and this Shalem gave birth to Warlock. Also, Anu Elian Elian El created the seed of Enlil, 
one named Baal, who was also called Hadad or Adad, who gave birth to the son whom they call Eliun, to rebel later and is worshipped as El by the Canaanites, who fathered the religions called Judaism, Christianity and Islam. This is the El of Judaism, the Eli of Christianity and the Ila of Islam. Hadad also had a brother named Yam, and another Mot, and a sister named Anat, which is not to be mixed up with Udam's daughter in Gadash, where Elian Elian El is really loved and respected. And the Anunnaki family of Udam and his mate Mami just had a daughter Anat, who were of the Muslimun, or agreeable Alahum, living in the part of the earth called Mu, which was still then in the holy land of Gadash. This family was to wean and rear Nakeba, also called Hawa and Eve, until the age of 18. Then she was to breed with Cadman or Adam.